So now authorization, if authentication is the, it's the it's the method that you identify who you are, then once you got authenticated, the authorization defines what you are allowed to do. Uh, to do. From the device administration point of view, it means that this is going to be in the format of the privilege level and allowed commands. So from the device administration point of view, you're going to be authorized as, as you authenticate, as you connect to, to a network device and you authenticate, you're going to be authorized to be to with access to specific commands and also you're going to be authorized with what is called a privilege level, which likewise gives you access to specific uh, commands on the uh, device. From the network access point of view, authorization means like a VLAN or an access list or a security group tag uh, or encryption. So that's going to be primarily the use case of when you're going to authenticate user access to the network via, for example, 802.1x. And then once the users are going to get authenticated, then the authentication server is going to push down to the user on authorization, putting that user support in a specific VLAN dynamically, and also attaching an access list to the port dynamically, which is going to restrict the user's access to the network, for example. And also can optionally enforce encryption via MACSEC or security group tags, which is going to be a security label, which is going to be used, uh, more, which is actually starting to be used more and more um, in, in large organizations to deploy a better and scalable firewall rules from a centralized place, which is going to be Cisco's identity services engine. Likewise, from the network access point of view, another kind of authorization is going to be the VPN speed tunneling policy. So like when the user tries to establish a VPN connection of that remote access and is going to get authenticated in the authorization process, the user can receive the spit tunneling policy, which tells the, the com to the computer of the user, to the NIC card uh, of the user, it's going to tell to the NIC card of the user which traffic should be sent to the VPN tunnel and which traffic should be sent uh, out of band um, um, uh, directly towards the internet bypassing the VPN tunnel. That is authorization. Next we can speak about accounting. So first of all before we speak about accounting because I forgot to mention this, clearly authorization cannot happen if authentication fails and of course there's no use case for accounting if authentication or authorization fails. So first the user has to authenticate successfully, then it's going to be able to receive some kind of authorization and then we can provide accounting. And I hope that makes sense. So counting once you got authenticated and you got authorized to perform specific actions on a device or to get specific network access, then accounting provides evidence of what you have done, like auditing. And for the network administration point of view, this is going to be command logging. So I want to log uh, which commands have been issued on which devices by which users. So in case something happens, I am going to be able to do um, an incident management, an incident analysis, and see that user Christian has, com has uh, configured the command write erase on switch 9, which means he has on purpose deleted the configuration of the device um, in there. From the network access point of view, accounting means I'm going to provide session statistics for billing. Like for example, if a user is connected uh, I don't know, via on a GSM, uh, on a 4G network or on a VP, via a VPN tunnel for X, uh, for two hours, I may actually want to build the user not based on the hours that he has been connected, but based on the traffic he's be, he has been sent back and forth to the 4G connection or to the VPN tunnel. So that's why I, I want to be able to account, okay, if, uh, on this user session which lasted for uh, three hours, what was the amount of traffic that the user has been has sent back and forward so i want to build the user accordingly based on the contract that we have signed together likewise session identification 
So in order to do uh, a billing for, in order to uh, gain, tr to collect traffic statistics via accounting for billing, I need to be able to associate the traffic that a user has been, has, has, has been, um, has uh, sent back and forth to the VPN tunnel, for example. I have to be able to correlate that traffic with the user's username and IP address and MAC address to make sure that that's the user that actually has uh, done all of that traffic back and forth. And how can I, for example, um, for how can I, maybe I would want to, you know, build the user uh, at, at hourly. Like maybe my billing system is implemented in such a way that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to expect the user to pay me X dollars for per hour, for example. So of course I would want to know when the user connected and when the user disconnected from the network. So I know what is the, how much, what is the amount of money that user has to pay to me because of, because of using th that specific service. So likewise, this is available via a session uh, session state via accounting to what is called session state. Is gonna the network device is gonna tell me when the user connected on the VPN tunnel or on the 4G network, or and when the user disconnected from the 4G uh, network or from the VPN tunnel.